Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, co-founder of Rack N and the Digital Rebar Project. I'm here to take you through the prep to set up for the Ansible Kube Spray uh, Kubernetes demo, uh, which lets you install Kubernetes using Digital Rebar as the back end. This is me prepping it. Um, so hopefully you've watched that already and you're like, hey, how do I get this set up? So let's do that. Uh, to make that go, basically I've come down, I'm at the rebar.digital site, we have a quick start, that quick start takes me over to here, and I just need to be able to run this on a, on a Linux system. So I could run this on a, or Windows or Mac, it really doesn't, it's cross-compiled. So. Uh, so I need a system, I already have one going uh, in Packet, I've built a CentOS system, basically uh, as this one, type 0 is sufficient. I'm going to whip through this CentOS, and you can pick a location that has machines in it. We have a code RackN100. Uh, if you um, want to use Packet, Packet, you can use that as a credit and get some credit to get some free time on servers. So I'm going to go in. Here's my quick start. I need a uh, terminal. There we go. And I'm going to SSH into this box. And there we go. So here's my SSH. Let's do this in a directory demo. And all I really need to do is come in and take this uh, curl script. So where's my quick start? I just lost it. Uh, quick start. If you want to use uh, the hot, it's not absolute hottest, we, we, but just after this sort of stable latest uh, with its tip, you can certainly do that. So let's jump back to here. Single paste. Curl bash, and this is downloading uh, Digital Rebar, installing the prereqs, getting everything you need going. So this will this will take you through it. While that goes in the background, uh, I'll give you a little bit of information about what you're seeing. Uh, so Digital Rebar is a provisioning scaffolding that boots machines, installs operating systems. Racken has provided a UX, and then control automation on top of that. So you download scripts and plugins and workflows that take advantage of Digital Rebar's capabilities. That's what Racken provides on top of this. What we're going to be showing you uses Racken's UX, but doesn't use any of the advanced workflows. This is just get it started real fast and simple. It's how we suggest people start. Um, so we're really sticking to Digital Rebar, and that has a layered configuration system, so you can start with community packages, you could add custom automation, you can add Racken pieces, and it's composable. So pieces can be brought in, read only all the racking content is, and we can patch it into the system. You make copies or clones, and then you use a mixture of stable read only pieces and your own custom content. So we've been very careful about how the system works so that you don't have to fork uh, good, stable, reusable automation. You just add in your special pieces. Um, other videos will explore that in a lot more depth. Today, we're just going to work through a very basic. Uh, new server, discovery boot, and we're going to install into the discovery image, which is a Sense7 image. We're not even going to take you through the extra layers that we would go where to install an operating system and things like that. Check other videos for that. Um, some really exciting workflow pieces uh, supported by that. So in this case, we just, we just installed it, and I'm going to go ahead and get the system running. Uh, which is just it tell you know the, the quick start is going to tell you exactly what to do run digital provision digital rebar provision um, I'm going to add in a flag to disable DHCP because we don't need it in packet um, totally optional um, both with or without packet or not um, but so I started it servers running now um, I'm going to go ahead and follow one more instruction here which is to upload the uh, uh, the sledgehammer uh, binaries. That's our discovery image. I could install CentOS or Ubuntu. I don't need that for these for these demos. Um, if you were going to try installing those, that's what you would do. Um, the thing to note about Digital Rebar is it's not tethered or tied back or managed in any way. It's a completely standalone system. You use our UX to attach to it. I'll go back to this page. Um, and so you are completely independent. We You don't have to go through our server to manage it. Or anything like that. The UX is just providing um, it behind the firewall access using React, and it talks directly to the uh, to the system. And with that said, let me actually go to it and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to bring up the web page for the site. HTTPS, everything's secure. I'm going to the site. 8092 is the API endpoint. I have to accept the 
uh, certificate, self-signed certificate. Of course, you can sign your own certificates uh, and add those instead. That redirects me to download the Racken UX, which is now running in my browser, and then I have to connect to the endpoint. Notice I'm not logging into Racken. We're not taking advantage of any of those features. Um, we're just using the, the community piece. So I'm going to uh, use the default login, and this brings up uh, the digital rebar dashboard. Once again, other videos can take you through a full tour. We're going to sort of move real fast, try and get you up and running. So in this case, uh, digital rebar has, you know, once again, scaffolding, doesn't have anything installed by default. You have to bring in content. Uh, and it also ignores all requests by default. So we have to tell it, hey, you know, if you don't know what, what's coming in, tell it to be discovery. And then if um, from there, go ahead and, and boot Sledgehammer. Uh, so that's basically the minimum set of things. I have to save that, of course. Uh, and then from there, I'm, I'm just about ready to go. I do want to take a moment and set um, my SSH keys so we can log into the box. We're going to be using Ansible, of course. And so from there, what I would normally do is take this uh, CE access. I would clone this and then update my access keys here. I'm going to be a little bit lazier than that. I'm going to go into global and I'm going to add those keys over here. Um, so what I want to do is put in my access keys. So it's the exact same parameters that you saw. Um, but what I, what I need to be able to do is go in and set my access keys. Let's see, there's a small bug that I'm fixing with this. Uh, so I have a small bug I'm going to fix. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm in the global parameter. I'm going to add access keys. Uh, in this case, I went ahead and defined it in parameters as an object. I'll add that. Uh, it's going to prompt me with uh, some information for my keys, which I will conveniently paste in from off screen. Yay. So uh, my public key, you're happy to add this into any system you'd like. So I've done that. And then I also need to add um, access SSH uh, root mode. Right. Once again, these are things straight out of that other template. I'm going to add that, and then I need to say without password. So what this is going to do, these two changes, I'm going to go back to the first one I showed you. This has an access keys parameter with a key in it and an SSH uh, root mode. If I look at glo global, I now have the same thing. Uh, access keys that will let me log into the system and SSH without password. This is essential because we're doing a new Ansible, and so I have to have SSH access to do that. Uh, if you're using Packet, uh, Racken actually has a cheat in the content um, where if you use our Packet provider, our Packet workflows, it'll install your SSH keys from Packet for you as part of the automated, automated workflow. So all the more reason to investigate the Packet content. Um, but at this point, I'm, I'm ready to add machines. Uh, so the only thing that I've, I'm missing from this is to create a couple of, of machines. So I'm back over at Packet. I'm going to uh, create a machine. Uh, we're going to call this our Coop Spray. I'm just going to call it Coop Spray. We need some type zeros. Um, that's sufficient. We could use type ones. Um, and let's see, I'm working out in New Jersey right now. And then one thing about using digital rebar like this um, is, oops, sorry, I'm not using CentOS, I'm using custom iPixie. Uh, and for that, I then need to use my IP address here. So we'll grab that. So we need to use our uh, endpoint IP address. Now notice we're using 91 and HTTP because we're using iPixie. And we have to tell it to use the default.ipixie image. So I can hit this from a web page, make sure it's up. This is template driven, so Digital Rebar is providing this based on that default setting that we just did a second ago. Um, and so from here, I need to go in and say, you know what, keep using the Pixie setting. Uh, and then let's create a couple of these machines. Let's see, because we're going to build two Kubernetes deployments. So I'm going to create 10. And uh, not 10, but A. So our ordering is right. And I'm going to deploy this. Uh, so at this point, Packet's going to come in and build these systems. And I will show you what that looks like as soon as we get a little bit further as when I get a machine back uh, from Packet about this. 
over on, on the Racken side, we're going to see this come through on machines. If we want, we can actually turn on the watcher and see the event log. So uh, Digital Rebar has a WebSocket event subscription, and I can subscribe and filter events. In this case, we're just seeing everything. But as machines come in, we'll actually watch them register into the system in this view. Um, it's very exciting from that perspective, if you get excited about WebSockets, which I do. So uh, we're waiting for Packet to do its thing. Going to take a couple moments. Um, but that's fundamentally it. At this point, um, you know, we're a couple minutes into the video, and I've been blathering on to you about things not directly related to the flow of events. So uh, we have gotten Digital Rebar up and running. We're provisioning systems, putting the discovery image in. Um, and while I wait for Packet uh, to come back, there we go. Uh, so it's, it's doing its thing. Normally we wouldn't be able to see uh, exactly what was happening, but we know how to how to go in and watch, and I'll show you that trick. Um, so when I look at an individual server, I'm just waiting for that one server to come up. Uh, I can actually watch the terminal boot. Uh, we have a couple other videos that show this. It's helpful to have in every video as a troubleshooting uh, mechanism. Come on. Yeah, I know the server's still being provisioned, but if I look in the URL, I can pick its GUID right here. And then from there, I can go back over to a window and I can SSH into, um, let's see, I believe it's the machine's GUID at SOS dot, uh, hold on a second. It's the machine's squid at, at, at uh, E, this is the New Jersey data center, wr1.packet.net, which is pretty. So this is going to give me um, access into watching the machine actually do its stuff. Uh, so I'm actually watching the machine at, in packet boot, and uh, I caught it fast enough. It's actually going through the iPixie process and installing Sledgehammer, so you can see it's Sledgehammer is booting right now. Um, and so that's that's... Wow. All right. So it's it's done. Sledgehammer optimizes two-stage bootloader. It's super fast, and as soon as it's installed and running, uh, it's going to uh, register back in with the digital rebar server that provisioned it and tell us what those machines are. And you can see they're already coming in. So here's these create machines and saving machines. That is the system phoning home. So it just takes seconds to get that initial discovery going. Uh, once the boot system is, is kicked in. So I'm going to minimize this. I'll refresh over here. And here are my systems. So I could go back in, um, copy that machine. Now, once again, there, there's nothing on them, but I can let's see if I can get out of this uh, thing. And I could SSH into that machine, new fingerprint, and I have now gone through the full provision cycle. So this is now prepared for me to do a 10 node Kubernetes demo. That's another video. Check that out. Um, and it's super easy. Once you've gotten this stuff done, this was the hard part. The next thing with Kubespray is going to be even easier. So hope you tune in for that second video. Uh, this has been Rob Hirschfeld with RackN. Uh, contact us, visit our site uh, if you want some help. Um, or learn more about this or see the advanced features. If you're like most operators watching this video, you just want to do it yourself, go to Digital Rebar and play. Uh, we have Slack channels and things like that, and we're happy to help you just in community without, without any identifying information. You can be nice and stealthy and learn this on your own a little bit before you talk to us. Have a great day. Thanks.